Hello, this is Rick with Berenix. Today we're going to take a look at a script for IP tables called Firehole, www.firehole.org. We're going to be going through the configuration for standard workstation, PCs, or servers. And if you're interested, uh, that's what this video is about, is a stateful packet firewalling solution for Linux. I'll be right back and we'll get started. Stateful packet filtering with IP tables and Firehole on Linux. What is IP tables? What is Firehole? Firehole is a script to that helps you manage IP tables. IP tables being a kernel level packet filtering system that allows you to control what comes in and out of your network. You can find the script again at HTTP or HTTPS firehole.org. Why do I want a firewall on Linux? What do I need it for? After all, GNU Linux is a secure by default, right? Well, actually, no. It's like any other operating system. The only secure computer is one that's unplugged. But being most people keep their computers plugged in, we have to take a look at what we might need to do as security and layers. Uh, to be able to secure our network, secure our machines, and do the best we can with it anyway. Because we do know that if you have an outgoing connection, someone can come in. The signal, go, signal goes both ways, and it, and it takes a lot to, uh, to keep things tightened up. So we're going to take a look at first at IP tables plus firewall script. The installation for Arch, Debian, and the Ubuntu's. Uh, other tools that you might want, like Net Tools and Map, IPTRAF, NG, Netstat, I, IF config for your old scores. Uh, we're going to talk about configuring Firehole for the basic configuration, help tips. We're going to look at the local machine config versus server configuration, advanced configuration and routing for source and destination routing, which is limited, and best practices, hardware versus software firewalls. And do we really need a hardware firewall? Well, let's get started by uh, installation. Uh, this is an Arch machine, um, but I can show you how to install this on Debian and Ubuntu's or uh, an installation for Arch. Now, for most distributions, IP tables comes prepackaged with your, your distribution. So if you just do an IP tables negative V, it'll show you whether or not it's installed. We'll give you an example here. And I've blown up the fonts so we can try to help you see this because, uh, and I've made the uh, background of the terminal dark so that hopefully you can see what we're doing here. Okay, if you take a look here, uh, we have IP tables version 1.8.5. And um, it says legacy, I'm not sure why, but anyhow, that's what we have. Um, and then if you take a look at uh, Etsy Firehole, because I have this installed already, oops. Okay. Okay. This is your Etsy Firehole uh, configuration uh, directory. And you'll see we have uh, various different configurations in here. Now, some of these I, I've came up with uh, uh, for different reasons for my own uh, personal use. But we're going to take a look at what you normally see when you first install it. But first off, we need to get into the installation and what you have to do on Arch Linux to install this. And I'll show you, I can't do it from here on this screen for Debian, of course, but I can give you the commands and show you the commands if you're on Debian or Ubuntu's uh, for installing this uh, uh, script, Firehole. So for the installation, it's pretty simple uh, for Arch Linux. Now, the scripts aren't available 
in, in the res regular repositories. They're available in the AUR, the Arch User Repositories. Um, you can use PAMIC, if you will, or you can install it here from the prompt with yay or yawart. Um, but you can do a yay. Uh, yay doesn't want sudo, I don't think. So it's yay never a firewall. And that should do it. I need to open up my firewall myself so we can take a look at this. And I'll show you how to do this too, to where you can actually just make a little menuing. This is a, e a XFCE4. So you can just, you know, make it to where you can get to your firewall from the desktop. I can show you that here in a little while. I, I, you basically just make these, these, these different uh, commands that you want for different reasons. Uh, from here and run it in the terminal, uh, something like this. Oop. Okay, let's go back to our terminal here now. And as you can see here in the AUR, we have Firehole 2, uh, two which is 3.16-1. Now I have this already installed, as you can see here, shows installed and the build files still exist. So that's how you install Firehole. When you get done, it'll place all your fire files where they need to be in Arch. Um, let's just get out of that for now. And then on uh, Ubuntu's and Debian's, you use sudo apt or apt-get. You can do apt-get or just they've changed that a bit and you can just use apt uh, sudo apt install firehole like that and this on on the Bantus and debians and other distributions it's in their main repository so you don't have to go to the aur type you know ppas or anything like that firehole by default is available on debian ubuntu's and, and pretty much most distributions um, so you just sudo apt uh, install firehole, or the, if you're old school, sudo apt get install firehole. Now, of course, if I run that, you're not going to get much because this is not Debian or Ubuntu's. But that's how you do it, and that will install it for you. Once you have it installed, uh, there's a few things you might want. You might want net tools. I, I'm the old style, IF config, this and that, and everything for you know, grabbing what I need for my uh, network interfaces. Um, but there's some, some tools you might want want to have on your box for that. And, and things that, you know, just to check for, uh, uh, you know, like Netstat. Uh, rip, ACP. Um, just so you are able to check out your connections there's really what's important so net stats another one you might want to uh, use and another thing I use is in map sudo in say in map you can do local host like that see what's running now that's bitwig studio the one two three four TCP open port uh, called hotline that's well known that if you run your Bitwig Studio in the background, that opens that port. Um, this is going to check your UDP to see if you got anything running. Oh, what did I do there? Huh, not sure why that's doing that. Address you. Oh. Huh. Okay, well, anyway, it's probably because I have the something not quite right. Maybe it's no, that's not right, is it? Sometimes I forget. Yeah, actually, I had it backwards. Sorry about that. It's small s, large u for uh, UDP packets. So there you have it, and that way you can see what you got running. You can also look for processes with PS. Uh,
but most of the time I just use Netstat, uh, Netstat or Nmap, just just to verify what what you have open. You can also do something like that with SS just to see what your connections are uh, currently. Or and you can pipe through SS2 just to SS uh, screw up TCP. So these are these are um, important commands for you to use. But anyway, getting back to Firehole, once it's installed on Debian, what you're going to do or Ubuntu's is you're going to sudo nano, or if you want to use VI, that's fine. I use nano. It, it comes on every distribution by default pretty much, and I've gotten used to it over the years, but I can use VI and others too. If you want to use VI, that's fine, or others, that's great. Uh, sudo nano, uh, let's see here, etc. Default, firehole. I don't know if it's, no, it's not in here. Um, now, if you're on Buntu's, it will be. And what you're going to do at the top of the file is you're going to set that to yes for wanting it to boot. And then you're going to want to sudo syscontrol enable firehole. Now, I have another program that you might want to check out too called systemd manager which uh, looks like this. Uh, right here. Well. Okay, basically what this does is just a GUI for uh, configuring systemd. But basically what you want on Firehole right here is you want to make sure that it's, it's checked for running and checked for, for being enabled when you boot the machine. Uh, that's important. Uh, you want to boot your machine up uh, with, with uh, Firewall running. And that's kind of important. So let's do this. You can enable it this way. And uh, that's fine. Uh... Okay, so we're going to change directories again and go to the Etsy Firehole directory. Now, the first thing you want to take a look at, let's just do uh, sudo nano firehole.conf. All right, now for one of my programs, uh, I have to, uh, it's resolve in the loading Fairlight page. If you don't have this in your your uh, firewall when you boot and you forget uh i did a little looking at it and and fairlight's running on tcp 49152 by default so i created a custom rule here that says allow my resolve which is what my custom rule is and the ports uh here to be allowed with the destination addresses of these uh, in other words, it only runs on my local networks. By default, that's the only port you're going to find open when I boot my machine. Now, another thing you might want to do, uh, by default, when you boot your firewall and you just say sudo firehole start, it uses the firehole.conf by default. Okay, that's the file that it uses is this file. By default, when you start the firewall, and then all you have to do to do that is just say sudo firehole start and hit enter. And what you're actually saying is sudo firehole, et cetera, firehole, firehole.conf start. And that's what you're actually saying because, again, by default, firehole uses the fire, firehole.conf and no other files. So when you boot up, uh, what I recommend, because this is the this is what actually runs right there uh, on boot, is that, and it starts that file. So what I recommend for your script for IP tables here, uh, let's see. Eh. is to have a blank fire hole comp. In other words, nothing in it at all unless you need it. If you're if you have an issue like I do where you have a program that's running off a port, you can always create a custom service like I did just to allow that to run uh, with your firewall running. 
Um, now, in terms of what I do, I, I create and, and copy the uh, Firehole Comp over to Firehole Allow, Firehole Allow All, and all the other ones, different ones you see in here. Um, you know, ones with VPN, ones without VPN, uh, different things like that. But um, if you take a look, it, it can get complicated fast. <laughs> There's a lot of things you can do with this script, but for now, uh, I'm not going to go through all of this. I'm just going to say that uh, you can blacklist with these commands. You can create custom service ports, which is what I have here. And, and all of this is in the documentation at uh, www.firehole.org. And I can always help, too, if you need some help with some, setting this kind of thing up. Now, this particular Firehole Allow, okay, I set up for uh, PIA VPN. Um, that, and what you do there is you, cr you grab your interface in which you're, you're, you have uh, uh, configured, and, and, you, and I gave it the name of the interface here, and I told it I wanted to use IPv4. You can say interface without the IPv4 if you like, but it's preferred that you put in IPv4 so you're telling it what network style you want this, these rules to work for. And in fact, I have IP table six turned off at the kernel level, uh, especially on these internal boxes. I don't really need it. Um, so you have that and you say interface this, and then you just give it a little name. This, in this case, it's the one. Okay. And what you're doing is you're basically saying protection all, which gives you a whole lot of out of the box, uh, 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 sin, uh, sin attacks, uh, different types of attacks. Uh, the script uh, goes ahead and puts all them rules in, in for you in IP tables. And uh, we'll show you that here in a little bit. And then what I say is I said, let allow the client my, v, my P of VPN and accept that. And then I told up here, I made a, a, a custom uh, my P of VPN uh, which is short for private internet access. Uh, I, I told it what ports and everything that I wanted to work with, UDP and TCP ports. So you need to write that rule if you want to do it this way. And um, I can show you that a little in a little bit too. If, it, it, there's a place on firehole.org where it will show you exactly how to configure custom services. And there are plenty of times where you need custom services, you know. But the benefit of this firewall is, is you could put as much into it or as little as you want. You could just say, you could say right here on the wand, protection all, client all allow, and get rid of all of the this right here, which is uh, your uh, Tune Zero interface that is created when you fire up PIA or most uh, VPN softwares. It'll create a, a virtual uh, uh, interface. It's not a physical interface. That's a virtual interface that's being created when you run PIA. And uh, basically what you're saying here is on the WAN, which is your outside interface on the machine, uh, you want protected and you only want to accept these ports from PIA. Okay? Right here. Then below that, you're going to say, uh, you want to use this tune zero, which is what's created. And I just put LAN VPN. That way it gives you an idea of how this is separated. And you say, again, protection all, which gives the internal network the same protections that you have on your, your external WAN interface. And then you say client DNS, HTTPS, who is NTP, or whatever services you want to allow, uh, you, you can accept them here. Now, this is wide open to DNS, HTTPS, who is, and NTP, wide open. And there's ways to secure and do better with this by using source and destination, uh, like I did here. On HTTP, I only accept the destination of archlinux.org, luna.archlinux.org, apollo.archlinux.org on this particular firewall uh, rule set. So basically what you have here is by default, the only thing that can connect anything is just PIA. And then on this interface, it allows you to use your client side. There's no servers here. 
Now on a server, you're gonna you're gonna uh, you're gonna write server rules, which is just as simple as saying client rules. Client is what you're doing, and servers is what you're you're opening ports for for HTTP HTTPS connections. So it would be if you're running a server, you're gonna say server HTTPS HTTP. Well, if you're gonna use two, you put them in parentheses. So H. Uh, sorry about that. My typing's not doing too well right now. Uh, accept, and then you can do source and destination if you like. So, for example, uh, 172. Uh, 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 destination of whatever on that network or outside global networks, whatever you want to do. So you could say whatever your local IP is here, give it a destination of Renix.org. And, you know, you, you can do it this way. Now, that, most of the time that's done for the client side. When you think of server, this is usually on the other side, uh, you know, uh, uh, where you're hosting your websites or your pages. You're running Apache uh, or web servers. Um, but you could just say, if you want to keep it wide open, you can just say uh, server HTT, uh, HTTP accept. Then anybody who wants to log in or hit your page can can access it. So th those are for servers, and this is all client side because this is this is a workstation, and I don't have any uh, servers running. Um, now you can still this is in here too, and this is good. Uh, I was trying to figure out why Bitwig was listening on this, but I figured it all out a while back. You can also Use IP tables directly if you want to hand write a few rules uh, for specific purposes. Um, I did here. You can see this, and then you can come down here and write uh, fire tables rules for uh, for whatever you need. Uh, it's IP tables rules. You could just use IP tables, SBIN IP tables, and then and then write your rules. You can tell it what interface you're using or your output or your input, your destination ports. And whether you want to drop it or whether you want to, you know, ignore it or whatever you want to do. Um, this script makes it easy. This is the kind of thing you see when you're writing the rules. And you can still use them inside your script. Okay. But this is what makes it nice. Because it's, it's taking this type of style of writing your, your IP tables rules. And it's putting into human readable form that you could think about and, uh, and, and understand. So that's what the whole purpose of this is. And um, this is just a simple configuration here. We'll look at another one. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Let's do allow all. And again, you just name these what you want, you know. And, it's, and I, then, I, like I say, I just create, uh, you know, links to, to my, and, and you just tell it to, uh, run in the terminal so you can put your password in and it just run your script right from here. It just makes things easy. If you're on the desktop, if you want to do it from the prompt, that's great. Uh, let's see. I changed my password and I'm still trying to get used to it. Sometimes I do this three times and don't get it right. It's fairly long. Okay. So anyway, here's some more custom services. And here's an example of how simple the, the firewall can be. Um, if you don't have any custom services and you just want to let, uh, let standard services out of your, your uh, system, then this is really it between here and here. That's it. That's your rules. You're saying IPv4 interface. This is your interface. And then you're going to call it a WAN, protection all. You're going to allow these clients to go out and accept and then of course again i don't i have http to where i've locked that down just a little bit better and said okay i only want http to go to these sites and you can do that for any one of these now dns https any of your services you can you can have destination and you can also tell it what source in your network that you want it to, uh, to connect so it'd be like any other firewall cisco hardware pixels or uh, you know, it's destination and source uh, connections. 
So uh, there's another example. There's not a whole lot more to look at. Here's a place where I block the other internal networks that are not being used. Um, and again, I keep those firewall rules and pretty much all of them at the bottom with the uh, IP tables, handwritten rules. Let's see here. Uh, I didn't do that right. That's Firehole Local. There we go. Okay. This is a little different too. Now, on local, when I say local, I'm talking about you don't have access to the web. These things are just for local sources only, for inside your networks. And here I blocked the network again, but I didn't block. You see where I wrote, like, you cannot block 172.16. That's why. Otherwise, you're blocking yourself on your own network. Um, custom services. I've got SIM server, router config ports, IceCast ports, MySSH, and uh, MyResolve. And basically, you're just allowing the services that you want to run local on your own local networks through and tell what IPs can... Uh, it can it can go to for a destination. In other words, you can connect to these destination ports. And if you really want to get, uh, you know, down to the point, you could say source. Uh, most of the time, you're going to have your source before your destinations, and it's just SRC. And you could say your IP of the box, you know, uh, you know, whatever. And you could tell the source IP and 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 destination. Uh, well, actually, it's after accept source da -da 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 destination. So you have to say accept first. If you just go like this and restart your firewall, you just accepted from anything in the networks. Um, for those, you could take the destination off or rim it out, and uh, you're you're going to be right inside your own net, uh, whatever networks. Uh, that can connect to that. So this is just basically telling this machine when you have it in local work and go. The reason I do things like that is I have a, a BSD monowall. It used to be monowall. I forget what they call it now. Uh, a four port router in front of all of this. And, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, open sense is what I use. And I've got just a four port uh, box in front of it. And what this allows me to do without having any any issues with uh, outside sources or having access to anything else is it blocks everything other than uh, for me to be able to access my internal networks uh, configurations and things, log into uh, other devices on my network without having an issue. So that's what that file was actually created for. I'll see here. Uh, here's a... Uh, See, no VPN here. Okay. Yeah, I got some GitHub ports on here, some Git ports so I can get some things. And basically, I allow everything out. Now, this is how simple your firewall rule could be. You could say protection all. And then here, I put any. So I don't even have IPv4 on here. So it's just any interface. This is about as simple as it gets. Um, and actually, I don't think you, I don't even have any custom services on this one. So you don't even need that. You'd have to write your firewall rule for this custom service right here. But as you can see, I don't have it. This allows everything out. It's a client side. It's not allowing, you know, services that you're hosting on the box to be accessed, but it's lying client all except. And, and when you don't see anything after that, it's basically saying anywhere anywhere like other firewalls hardware firewalls or what have you so that's what you're actually saying when you just leave it like that you're saying give us those protections for what firehole uh you know gives us and then allow all clients out and on any interface too see it's any interface um and it could be ipv6 it could be ipv4 it's, there's nothing stated here so this is an open everything out firewall right here and you could just ignore this up here because I don't have any um, custom rules written for that. Now, if you wanted to, you could do something like uh, uh, client uh, my get 
uh, accept source destination. So if your source is where you're sitting, you can also do something like this too. You can say whatever domains you want. Um, and you can say, uh, you know, if you're going to use multiple domains, the rules are basically you put them in parentheses. It's just like up here where you see these ports. If you're saying something multiple times in a after the equal sign, you put it in parentheses. Here's your basic rule. Now, it'll still work sometimes without it, but this is the right way to do it. Uh, I see github.org com whatever so you could say something like that so you're going to allow whatever box this is your ip i take it because otherwise nothing's going to connect <laughs> when you're using it so you're going to say you're going to allow this these ports right here tcp and udp ports 9418 which is common port for get and you're going to say my get and you're going to say accept source this ip to this, this destination. That's a more secure way to doing things. And on servers, you're going to see a lot more of that in terms of where things go and how it's being routed. But for the most part, you can also just say client my get except now you can go anywhere from any IP that's on the network, really, or whatever machine, what have you. It's not as secure as giving it source and destination addresses. But there's a, a firewall there, uh, rules that are plain and simple, allow all out. And so you can see how simple uh, your firewall can be. And let's see here. And again, if you want to start IPv4 blacklisting people and blacklisting things coming in and out, this is how that's done. And you put all this before your rules. Everything goes after your version. And then you could just write this anywhere up here. You can put your custom servers in. Go ahead and put all this stuff up top and kind of like a header, like, um, you know, of your file. And then uh, to start your rules and your interfaces and things below all that. Uh, and whatever else you want to do. So that's pretty much how this works for setting up the rule sets. And if you want to see, like, uh, let's see. I think it's show. I forget how to do that now. Oh, can't remember. We can do this. I should say show in here someplace. Oh, list. Okay, that's what I was trying to get to. I thought it was show, but it's list. Okay, basically, this is what I was talking about, where when you start Firehole, it, it creates a lot of these rules, and it, it blocks, uh, you know, it's checking for states. It's, it's a stateful packet firewall, so it's going to check for states, flags, acts, uh, rests, uh, destinations. It's checking for everything. If you come down here, you'll see, let's see where that's at. Um, it's telling you to drop it in invalid forward. These are rules that are created by the script itself. These aren't rules that we, we, we wrote. Um, here it's telling it's going to do a one second burst and log it. Uh, and, and this is what it's saying. If it drops unmatched, uh, unmatched pass unknown, that it's going gonna, it's gonna to limit uh, the burst rate. And then it's going to log this uh, to the log uh, anywhere to anywhere. Uh, let's see here. Okay. This is where I wrote the rules to blacklist, uh, blacklist these networks. And you can see blacklist right here. Um, and you're, you're going to want to check all your rules, make sure they're all working too. I mean, you can't just write them and, and let it go. You're going to want to check things to validate that your firewall is actually working. Some will call it penetration testing, but you can 
you can test your rules to make sure that the things you're doing are working. But this is how you check just to see what's actually loaded and uh, just do a list. I, th I thought it was show, IP table show, but it's not. So here's some more rules I wrote, and I told it to allow Apollo and LunaArchLinux.org. And here's the rules right here. Um, let's see what else we got. Mm. Most of these rules here are, see, ICPM flood, ICMP flood, you know, this this is see how it, it it's what it's doing it's it's doing a limit and it, it can only burst so much and it block it blocks uh attackers that are attacking you uh, via icmp uh here's mal uh block malform uh uh you know coming in uh you can see block uh, xmas here's xmas right here uh a tcp without a sin um so Basically, what I'm showing you here is that there's specific rules that are created by the Firehole script that it puts into IP tables at the kernel level that you don't have to write. You just write the rules that you need to allow in and out. And when you say protection strong, this is what it does. Protection strong on your interfaces puts, puts all these uh, uh, rules it creates all these rules to, to block, block these things, you know. Um, for the most part, I've been using a firehole for, well, almost as long as I've used Linux. So it's probably going on 20 years. But uh, if you take a look at that, you'll see the benefit of it. And like I say, you don't have to, to you know, SBIN, fire, you don't have to write all that out if you, if you can just do some basic uh, uh, rule sets and and uh allow what you want in and out of it now there's example files when you install this too you can look at and it does say firehole defaults but that's actually a configuration uh file for default it's not the actual firehole.conf uh example but there's other services here too you you got qos here too um there's just lots of things uh uh, that you can do with this. I've even done just can complete routing with it just for as a router uh, where it comes in here and goes out here and does this in between and, and the machine did nothing but route packets. So you can use it as a packet inspector, firewall, router. Um, there's quite a bit you can do with it. And there's a decent manual too. Firehole has a decent manual. So you may want to look into that. But uh Let's see what I put down for Firehole Soft. I can't remember what all these are. I don't use every one of these, I don't think. Yeah, that's basically just, oh, I know what this is. As you notice right here, it's, it's blacklisting pretty much all the internal networks. Um, and what I've got is a IPv4 interface, any world, any, any interface, any place, uh, protection all, and then nothing. This is the same thing as a blank file. You could, you could just go up here and do this and have that, which is what I recommend for your default firehole.com. That way when you boot up, you don't have any connections when you boot up. Or like I said, if you, if you uh, have an issue and you're forgetting to allow a port out because you're having a problem with, uh, uh, you know, uh, software, DaVinci Resolve in this particular case, then you'll want to write that rule in there just so that you can can allow that to work on localhost. You'll bump into those types of things, but that's why all these tools and are, are so important so you can see what's running on what port they're listening to. And so you can allow the things you want in and out of your networks. And that's what all this is about, stateful packet firewalling and um, doing it easier uh, this makes it so much easier. I use uh, Firehole on servers. However, I also have servers where there's hardware firewalls in front of it. So, uh, you know, in particular, Cisco equipment, uh, a lot of times will be sitting in front of that uh, in the data centers and things. And, and that way you have two layers of, of, of uh, support there. 
uh, between the hardware firewall, what you let in and out of that. And then all my, on all my servers, I run Firehole. Um, I consider it a very good firewall script and I've had little problems with it either. Um, now in terms of uh, advanced configuration, uh, that's pretty much it. Some of what I showed you with doing custom um, configuration is advanced. It would be considered advanced. Um, and, and like I say, the manual's real good on how to do all this, but uh, uh, where am I at? Yeah, I'm still in here. This would be considered more advanced once you get into creating your custom service ports, um, setting things for specific uh, network to, uh, topologies, IPv4 versus IPv6, what have you. Um, making sure that you don't just say any interface, you're actually choosing the interface that you want to firewall on. Uh, doing things like giving it source and destinations. Uh, you'll see the same thing in any hardware, Cisco equipment. You give it a source, give it a destination, or you can say any, any. That's basically what you're doing here. Um, that's That would be, uh, you know, getting into the basics of uh, routing uh, packets. So um, this is pretty much what I wanted to show you. And let's see, let's go back to our notes here. Okay, so what is IP tables? IP tables is a... A kernel level packet filtering system. What is Firehole? Firewall hole is a script that will allow you to manage IP tables and put your firewall rules into something that you can configure and view in human readable form. Uh, makes it a lot simpler. Uh, again, the address here is https firehole.org. And you can find more information there. You can compile the source from there, too, and download it. However, it's so much easier just to sudo apt install firehole or, you know, pacman negative capital S. Or uh, in, this, in this case, it's on the AUR. So you do a yaw or a EA or whatever you want to do or just use PAMIC to install it, and it'll compile it. Um, the IP tables, firehole script, and installation for Arch and Debian's. Okay, we've done that. Other tools, net tools, that includes uh, various different things on Arch that you might want. Nmap, I showed you that. That's good for checking, uh, you know, just nmapping yourself. You can nmap others too. I don't recommend it unless you're doing port sniffing on somebody. But I've always ran nmap on my own servers and things in conjunction with other tools, netstat and what have you. Uh, IP traf and G I didn't get into, but uh, just let me show you that real quick. I, I use this all the time just to uh, watch incoming and outgoing traffic, but just sudo, let's see. Uh, and, I'll, and I copy the uh, file over to just IP trap, which is what it used to be years ago. And I've been using this forever too. Well, I'll get used to this password someday. Like I say, sometimes I do this three times. Basically what this does, you can configure this. It's, an, it's a, a traffic monitor, but you can uh, grab whatever ethernet uh, interface you wanna uh, take a look at. You can set this to re, uh, re reverse DNS so you can see who's uh, on your box. I use it on uh, pretty much all my boxes. So every once in a while I'll even use it on servers or in front of servers or in front of uh, other machines that are Windows so I can see what's coming in and out. A lot of time it's beneficial because what you can do is you can figure out what connections are having issues when you're setting up firewalls. And then you can go back once you figure out what's connecting. Uh, there we got in a connection from, from archlinux.org. Um, <clears throat> and, and what you do is you can see what's connecting and, and figure out why. And then you, you can go to your routers or firewalls and import uh, and, you know, create the rules and things that you need to allow things in and out if you lock it down too much. So I use IP traf uh, all the time, have for many, many, many years. Uh, there's other uh, ways to do all of that, but this is just a simple, uh, simple program. And uh, I've been using it for years. You can check that out. 
It's called IPTRAF NG. Now, on Arch, this is installed through the AUR. And on, if you just say sudo apt install IPTRAF on Debian or Ubuntu, it'll be in their, just that part, and it'll be in their regular repositories. Uh, Netstat's something you really need. Uh, if you're going to do anything, and if, if you're old school like me, I use ifconfig, and uh, I know things are changing, but I, I still can't get past. It's kind of like Red Hat. I used Red Hat for years, too. I've used every distro there is all for 20 years, and all the way back to Slackwares where I started. But, um, you know, Red Hat and it's check config and all that, I haven't forgot any of that either. And, and some of this stuff just gets in your head, and you never get rid of it. Uh, configuring Firehole. Basic configuration, we showed that. Uh, help tips. My biggest help tip is on Debian or Ubuntu to make sure you go to the Etsy uh, Firehole or default Firehole file. Make sure that that's enabled to allow it to be turned on at boot. Uh, and then to make sure that you uh, add that to your systemd startup processes so that you can make sure that when you uh, come in and the second thing is is just put a blank default fire hole conf in your etc uh, etsy whatever you want to call it uh, fire hole directory blank with just version 6 at the top that way when you're booting your machine you don't have to worry about uh, uh, connection issues you're not going to be connected you know you're going to be firewalled when you boot your machine and that's that's a tip uh, you really don't need to have everything wide open when you boot your machine. You can set up, and I'll show you this here just in a second, uh, you know, some, some rules, just like I showed you in there, and then I'll show you, uh, you know, I created just some links there, and, and it makes it easy. Um, local machine config versus server configuration. On a server configuration, you're using the term server, so it's going to be uh, allow server from this IP to that IP or uh, open HTTP, HTTPS, and whatever services you want to open up. Uh, on servers, you're going to open server ports. On on client-side machines, you're just going to allow the client side. So that's how that works. Uh, as far as Vance configuration and routing, this is what I was talking about, where you create a source and a destination. So your, your source is wherever you're at and what IP you want to use in your networks. The destination is where you're going to go and how you're going to route it. So in other words, you can allow HTTP or HTTPS from your box or your network, internal or external, it don't matter, to whatever destination routing that you want to. And that would be considered your, considered your advanced configuration for uh, routing. Um, and then best practices, hardware versus software firewalls. My belief is, is that all security is done in layers. There's no machines that are secure unless you unplug it. So if you do your security in your layers and you use, uh, known good best practices, you're going to have maybe a couple firewalls in a role, a hardware firewall, like I said, and then a software firewall, uh, running, you know, IP tables, a script or something running IP tables on your individual servers and workstations. Um, and then you put a router gateway in front of that, a perimeter firewall, so to speak. And then you've had, have a couple layers there, uh, which is your best practices. Uh, and there's much more to all of this. Uh, when you, when you say security, again, there's no such thing as security unless you unplug it and throw it in a closet. So, um, do we need a hardware firewall? My opinion is, is not really. And not on your internal business networks, you can use OpenSense or PFSense or something like that and just have a four port uh, gateway router and then just put, um, you know, if you're using Linux boxes, if you have Windows boxes back behind PFSense, PFSense don't care, you know, or OpenSense don't care. In my case, uh, for this type of thing, I use OpenSense and uh, it works just fine. And then on individual Linux machines, um, I run, uh, you know, Firehole and IP tables. Um, that's how I do it anyway. And then on the servers, I like again. I I told you your best benefit is to find a data center who who provides. Not all data centers provide uh, Cisco picks or other equipment in front of your your boxes. Most don't. And uh, but I uh, always go to a data center that provides a firewall in front of everything. 
it's called a perimeter firewall and the data center that I do business with provides that. And then my machines or whatever I'm doing back behind that for servers uh, run uh, IP tables and firehole. So this is what I have. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, let's come back here for a second. So what I have is, I know this didn't go real smooth. I'm not all that good at this yet, but I am working on it. And I appreciate you uh, paying attention and watching and saying hi and stopping by. And uh, we'll be creating more videos as it goes. But for now, my name's Rick, and this is Varenix. Have a good one.